Hello, welcome back. Matt Osborne from MrLike.com. Now, if you watched my last video, you may have seen me suggesting that having a Leica camera may not help your photography or may not guarantee you better photos. Obviously, that's all a bit tongue in cheek. It's the photographer that makes the pictures, not the camera. But that being said, to kind of balance the argument and to cover some of the topics not covered in my first video, in this video, I will suggest reasons why a Leica camera can benefit your photography. So let's get started. Okay, so in my first video, I said that having a Leica camera is not going to help benefit your photography. But actually it can. <laughs> what do I mean by this? What I mean is, depending on the type of camera that you use at the moment, you could absolutely benefit from using a Leica camera. And I'm not suggesting you need to go out and buy the latest digital Leica M10R uh, 40 megapixel camera. You can get cheaper Leica cameras. Okay, so just for argument's sake, let's say you currently shoot with a DSLR. It can be Canon, it can be Nikon, it can be... Who else makes DSLR cameras? I've not used DSLR cameras for a while. Okay, it could even be, say, a mirrorless camera, I guess. It could be the latest Sony or the latest Fuji camera. These modern cameras have autofocus lenses, auto everything bodies, and all you're pretty much doing is pressing the button on the top. And if it's on auto everything mode, it kind of... The computer inside gives you a photo at the end of it. It's not very rewarding, and that's kind of an understatement. I used to use the Nikon before I moved to Leica, and I used to use pretty much all manual focus or vintage lenses just to try to inject some kind of fun and difficulty into the actual taking a photo process, and I always shot it in manual mode. So let's just say, for an example, you currently shoot with a DSLR and shoot in aperture priority mode with autofocus lenses and you get nice photos. So if you're used to carrying around a big DSLR camera and a couple of big lenses, maybe zoom lenses, and you're in kind of a bit of a lull with your photography and you're kind of struggling to get inspired, how could a Leica camera inspire you to get out and start shooting again when you don't want to carry around a big heavy DSLR camera? Assuming you've got a DSLR camera. Obviously now cameras are starting to get a bit smaller, but I'm sure some people still use DSLRs. And this is not limited to DSLRs, it's just one example. So instead of having to carry this around, would it be quite nice to carry something this size around instead? Can you see the size difference? So this is a Leica. This is a rangefinder camera. This is an auto everything DSLR camera. This camera has manual focus, and the way I use it, it has manual exposure, so manual everything. So manual everything camera, auto everything camera. Big, heavy camera, smaller, more compact camera. Which one would you like to carry around all day? Personally, I'd do this any day. So if we now look at this Leica M rangefinder camera, for example, how could this digital rangefinder camera improve your photography? The way I looked at it and the way I've seen other photographers talk about it is, number one, it's smaller, so you're more likely to carry it, so you're more likely to have it with you, so you're more likely to use it and take pictures. That's obviously quite a weak argument for Leica because you can now get small mirrorless cameras as well. But if you currently use a bigger DSLR camera, then having a small camera, you're going to use it more. And something like a Leica could tick that box. Number two, if you're kind of bored with your photography because the camera does everything for you and you don't feel like you have much input into the final picture, by shooting with a camera in manual mode, regardless of the make, even with your existing camera, that will help first start to make it a bit more engaging because you've got to actually think about what you're doing before you take your picture. And the next step up to that would be buy yourself a manual focus lens for whatever cab you're using. Again, it can be a Leica, but it could also be a manual focus lens on the Nikon we just looked at. It could be a vintage lens mounted to your Sony or your Fuji. The mirrorless cameras are great because you can pretty much fit any lens via an adapter and use them. So again, having a manual focus lens on your camera will make it more engaging because you've physically got to focus to take your picture rather than just kind of spray and pray, hold it down, ding, 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 and hope one of them's in focus and everything looks nice. I think automatic camera users are more like computer operators than photographers because if everything's set to automatic, especially if you're using flash as well, such as some wedding photographers, they'll have automatic flash, autofocus lens, auto everything camera. The camera just does everything for you and you don't really need to think. And I think personally that's the problem where it becomes less interesting. I think as it becomes too easy, then it starts to become less interesting. And I'll come to that a bit more in a second. So Leica's offer smaller cameras. They offer manual 
settings, the alpha manual focus lenses, but you could argue you can put a manual focus lens and use manual settings on your non Leica camera, and that's true. So what else is different? Well, a Leica M camera is a rangefinder camera, which means you're looking through here and not through here. I've covered this in previous videos, so I won't dwell on it too much. What does it mean in reality? I believe using a rangefinder camera improves your composition of the final image. Why do I say that? Because on a DSLR camera like the one here that we just looked at, because you're looking through the lens, if you're using a shallow depth of field, the background kind of blurs out and you don't really need to consider what's in the background. You're only really looking at what's in focus. In contrast, when you're using like a, like a rangefinder camera, everything's in focus all the time. So you can see the kind of the tree in the distance, the fence post, the road, the person walking into the frame from the left. And because you can see everything, because you're not seeing the depth of field, you're just seeing as if you're seeing with like a normal eye. It's, it's exactly the same, the only difference is there's a focus patch in the middle and then it tells you kind of the framing of your final photo. Other than that, it's just exa exactly the same as me looking at you with camera or without camera in kind of simple terms. So because you see everything, you can then adjust your horizon. You can check what's on the edges of your frame and personally, I think my photo compositions improved when I switched from Nikon DSLR to a Leica camera. So I definitely feel it improves your composition process because you can see everything through the viewfinder. So what other benefits does a Leica give you? Another benefit perhaps is the fact that Leicas are a much slower camera to operate. You don't buy a Leica camera for its, I don't even know what a good frames per second is, what 20 frames per second is that good? Um, I'm not a spray and pray shooter, so I have no idea. I don't shoot action sports and I don't kind of hold it down until it starts to buffer. If you are that type of photographer, then you probably won't appreciate Leica cameras. But the fact that most Leica cameras are reasonably slow in terms of continuous shooting mode, if you were to use that, I think most Leica shooters I would expect would use the single shot mode. So I think by working the single shot mode, the process of bringing the camera up to your eye, number one, Focusing, number two, checking your composition and adjusting left, right, up, down as needed. Step forward, step back if you're working on a fixed lens. Check your exposure. By the time you've done all those things, you've had time to consider your final photo. If you're using a DSLR camera with a zoom, all you'll probably do is stand on the spot, zoom in or zoom out, click, done. And you probably just go click, 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 click and have 10 photos the same. And then you've got to go through those when you get home. So you can have 10 potentially average photos with little thoughts taken before making the picture. Obviously this is an example. Or you can have one well thought out photo and that be your keeper photo. And it's probably quite likely that your one photo is going to be better than your 10 photos taken on a, your auto everything DSLR camera in this kind of example. Obviously a lot of assumptions, but I'm just suggesting that that is quite probable based on the time taken and thought process to use a slower manual focus, manual everything camera. It's worth pointing out that some Leicas do have the auto exposure mode or aperture priority, but I choose not to use that. There's, there's no kind of right or wrong. Okay, so what have we looked at so far? So, so I've suggested so far based on my experience with using Leica cameras, it's improved my photography by number one, having a smaller camera setup thereby having it with me more often, thereby more likely I'm going to use the camera. Number two, it's a manual everything camera, so I'm having to think about the exposure, the focus, the... what else do you have to think about? Number two, the fact that it's manual focus and I use it in manual exposure mode, it slows me down and it gives me time to think about my picture. Number three, it's a range front of camera, so I believe that helps me improve my composition because I can see everything in the frame before taking my shot. And then I guess number four, adding all those things together, it takes longer to take a picture, meaning hopefully it's a better thought out photo. So those are some of the things I think helped me with my photography. So in my first example, I suggested that if you had a DSLR camera and using auto everything mode and you wanted to improve your photography, you could start to use a digital camera with manual settings, manual exposure. I think that's one kind of step to make you think a bit more and hopefully get you a bit more engaged into taking your pictures, thereby hopefully making it a bit more enjoyable and hopefully in turn your photography will improve. So my next example, what if you already have a digital Leica camera and you're getting at a bit of a flat spot and kind of a bit 
uh, it's all a bit too easy. You've got good at your manual focusing and you've got good at gauging your exposure and it's all a bit too easy and you're just like, mm, it's not very challenging. What I suggest would help you in this example is getting a film like a camera, such as this like M3. So in this example, if you're already using a digital Leica and Leica M camera in this case, if you then buy a film like M camera, you can use existing lenses from your digital camera onto your film body. So how does using a film like a camera benefit your photography? Number one, shooting film will slow you down even more because every time you click the shutter, it's gonna cost you some money. <laughs> so before you click, it's like, is it worth me spending 50p or whatever the cost is, depending on the film stock you're using and how you develop your film. But you might be like, is this worth 50p or a pound to take this photo of this random tree or fence post? And if the answer is no, then it may push you to look for more engaging subjects, which may in turn might mean that you then have to start taking trips out at, on a weekend looking for things to photograph. And by the camera getting you out the house and going looking for photography subjects, hopefully with it the enjoyment factor will improve and in turn by practicing more your photography skills will improve and everything starts to go up, up and up. So I think by having a film camera, the one argument is it's going to slow you down, make you think more and potentially make you more selective about your subjects, thereby take a day to go and look for nice subjects to take photos of. I guess talking from experience, I plan things around photography, but I guess you could argue that for any digital camera and any film camera. Just the fact that by making yourself go out and looking for more interesting subjects, taking a short vacation or a day trip somewhere, it doesn't matter what camera you use, it's going to inspire you to take more pictures and hopefully the enjoyment will come with that. And I agree that's true. It doesn't matter if you're using a Leica camera or a non Leica camera. So example number three, let's just say you're bored of your digital camera because everything just comes too easy. There's no kind of challenge in an auto everything camera. And if you use manual settings, you've perfected your manual settings. And so once you'd mastered your digital photography, you then thought, I'll try film. And you went out and bought yourself a cheap, I don't know, Minolta film camera or Nikon film camera. And that was okay. It was a bit of fun. But again, you kind of lost interest because the camera, you didn't like the kind of the feel of the camera or the quirks of the camera. It's still a bit automated or a bit plasticky or a bit kind of crappy feeling. The build was rubbish or whatever the argument may be. The next reason a Leica camera may help you is the fact that Leica cameras are beautifully made, some more than others. This Leica M3 is particularly fun to use and, and it kind of makes me want to take pictures. So if you've got a film camera that's not inspiring, by getting a vintage Leica camera that is inspiring, where you just enjoy, I don't know, some people are quite tactile and you might just buy a Leica just to enjoy the, the sound of the shutter. I know this is a rubbish demonstration, I can't fire the shutter because it's filming the camera. But you can see my Leica M3 video if you want to hear the, the beautiful sound of a Leica M3 shutter. But yes, yeah, some people will actually do more photography just because they enjoy the camera they're using so much. If the camera makes you want to use it, then it's going to help your photography because it's driving your passion for your photography. And with it, you're going to get better just by having more practice. So by having a camera the way you love the feel of everything and all the little movements and everything's really beautifully made, such as a vintage Leica camera, it can only help your photography. And I can almost hear you telling me, yes, but I can't afford a Leica camera, whether it's a digital Leica camera or a film Leica camera. Leica's always cost multiple thousands of pounds and I don't have that much money. And I totally agree, some Leica cameras are very expensive. But what most people don't seem to realise is there are Leica cameras which are affordable and can be cheaper than your Nikon camera or your Sony camera or whatever camera you use. So you're like, surely that cannot exist. How can there be a affordable Leica camera which is beautifully made and will last probably longer than me? And there is. Now, if you're a regular viewer of this channel, this is not something new and I know some of you have picked up these cameras and told me about it after watching the videos I've released. But if you want a Leica camera to inspire you to actually go out and shoot and it won't break the bank and it's so nice that just own, even if you never put a roll of film through it, you can just have it next to the side of your bed and kind of, I don't know, polish it every day or something like a, I don't, like a vintage car or a, a nice, I don't know, Harley Davidson motorbike, but much cheaper. Are you ready? If you want a camera which will inspire you to go out and shoot, and it's kind of affordable if you kind of save up for a few months, depending on your budget and depending on 
money flow, things like that, and a camera that you will not lose money on and you'll probably gain money on it. So if you save up for two months and buy this camera, if you then find you don't use it in a year's time, I'd like to think that you'd make money when you sell it. So is there a better argument than that to buying a Leica camera? Okay, you ready? Any guesses? Are you already shouting the answers? Don't shout the answers yet. Okay, shut your eyes. The camera you need, which is affordable, and, and I'd like to think will help you enjoy your photography again, assuming you don't enjoy it, or will improve your photography if you're using an auto everything camera, is a Leica 3 camera. This particular model I still need to do a review on, and this is a Leica 2F. Now look at the size of that. Now you cannot argue that that is not a beautiful camera. Are you ready for a size difference? So if you bored of carrying your big fat DSLR camera, wouldn't it be nice to own one of these little Leica rangefinder cameras? And these cameras with lens could be cheaper than the lens on your DSLR. So let me just explain that a bit more. These are called Leica 3 cameras or Barnack Leicas. They have screw mount lenses and some of them can be as small as this. This is a 50mm f3.5 lens which you have to lift out, take your picture like so. And then when it's not in use and it's in your pocket, done. So you can pick up one of these cameras for, I'd say less than 200 pounds. It doesn't matter which Leica 3 model it is, or like some of them are called Leica 2s, but it's a little bit confusing. I'll put a link below to a review I've done, which kind of explains the different versions. Some of them, there's the original Leica 2, then the Leica 3 range, and then they release some Leica 2s after the Leica 3, such as this one, which is kind of a modified Leica 3. But in simple terms, think of it as Leica 3 cameras, and then it can be, say, Leica 3 A, B, C, blah, 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 blah. Everything except the G. The G is more expensive. So the Leica 3C and the Leica 3F are the two most popular. And if you look carefully and keep an eye on eBay, you can often get the cameras with a lens for under £200. If you want a more mint version, you may pay closer to £300. But generally speaking, I have seen them listed for between £100 and £200. So just think of that, you could own a Leica camera for less than £200 or with lens ready to go. What you do, obviously it's a film camera, so you put a roll of film in, then you have 36 exposures, well 38 if you kind of follow my how to load film review. So these are slow to use manual focus, manual exposure rangefinder cameras. They're even slower than a standard rangefinder camera because you have a separate window to look through to focus and then to look through to compose. So it's a two step process, focus, compose. So that slows you down even more, which makes you think more. Hopefully by thinking more, you may then become more selective and by becoming more selective, you're gonna take less photos. And then when you remember that there's film inside and it's gonna cost you money to press the shutter, that's gonna slow you down even more. And so suddenly you're going from 10 photos of the same crappy subject, potentially, and shooting a thousand photos in a day, none of which you'll probably use because you didn't give them much thought and you'll just walk, walk forward a few steps of exactly the same thing from a slightly different angle. Instead of having a thousand photos on your DSLR camera in this example, none of which you were particularly happy with, you can have 36 to 38 exposures, photos, which are will, which will all well considered and taken perhaps across a weekend or across three days or even the whole week. People photograph at different speeds, but a Leica camera is definitely going to slow you down. Okay, so I know there's a lot of assumptions in this video and I appreciate there's many holes in my arguments in terms of, yes, but I could just work slower as my small Fuji camera or yes, I could just use manual settings on my Sony camera with a vintage lens. All of those comments are valid. And I'm just using Leica as an example that if you enjoy the camera that you use, just by having a camera that makes you want to take pictures, you will start taking better pictures. It's just kind of a no-brainer. It doesn't need to be a Leica. It could even be something like a Hasselblad. It could be a, a Mi S7, if you like, 6x7 format. It could be a TLR camera, such as a roller cord or a roller flex. It could be 4x5 and shoot even slower, or 8x10. The list is pretty much endless, but shooting film, if you're a new photographer especially, and you've never shot film before, shooting film is absolutely, I think, 110% gonna improve your 
photography and then shooting slower cameras such as non-autofocus film cameras in this example rangefinder cameras or TLR cameras anything where you've got to think before you take your picture again I feel will improve your composition and your overall pictures I'm not saying my photos are any good I'm not saying my composition is any good I guess I'm just trying to share and express how Leica cameras have helped me in my photography and to tell you that Leica can be affordable which I think is amazing that's worth pointing out that you can get cameras similar to Leica cameras but even cheaper which should give you many of the same benefits and I'll try and share some of those in future videos I've got a list of videos to do so I think that's it for this video I've probably forgotten some blindingly obvious reasons why Leica cameras may help benefit your photography I guess one obvious one which I mentioned in the first video and I should probably recap here Leica lenses are known to be very high standard yes you can get cheaper lenses which also are optically very nice but optically rangefinder lenses such as those made by Leica and even kind of Zeiss and Voigtlander are known to be very good and and I'd like to put my neck on the line and say that in many cases rangefinder lenses are going to give you better image quality than say DSLR or SLR lenses yes it's not always true so don't shoot me down there are exceptions in both kind of lens categories but as a general kind of rule rangefinder lenses are excellent so I think that's all I've got for you I'll be back to uh, gear reviews very soon I just wanted to share this kind of counter argument as to how Leica cameras have helped me improve my photography and you may find some of the same benefits with your photography. Check in the description below and I'll include some related uh, Leica camera videos which you might find useful. I'll put in some links to eBay for the Leica 3 cameras so you can see what the latest prices are and hopefully grab yourself a bargain before everybody else goes and gets one. The price has already I think gone up since I first started watching them maybe nine months ago so, so you're not going to lose money if you do get one. So excuse all the assumptions in this video and the kind of sweeping statements Either way, hopefully it might give you something to think about and perhaps it might inspire you to do something with your photography to make it more enjoyable, which may in turn might result in better pictures if that's the route you're trying to go in terms of improving your pictures. For those people where your photo is already amazing and you might be doing it with a DSLR or whatever camera, that's all great and there's nothing against kind of non like cameras. This is just based on my experience. So if you're still watching this kind of rambling video, thanks for staying to the end. If you enjoyed it, I'd love you to give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment below whether you already use Leica cameras or you've maybe moved recently to a Leica camera. And if so, how's your experience? Have you found similar to me that by moving to Leica, your enjoyment factors increased or image qualities increased? It'd be interesting to hear your thoughts. Maybe you moved to Leica and hated it, sold it and went back to a Sony. Again, it's good to hear your thoughts. I'm sure others watching this video will be interested in reading your comments. And to finish, if you've not yet subscribed, feel free to do so. And a big thanks to my patrons. Uh, we are growing week on week and the content is also growing even faster week on week. So yes, thanks for your support and back soon with another video. Bye.